Good evening. Um, lovely to welcome you to this evening's episode. I'm Claire Williams from the British Equestrian Trade Association. Um, over the summer, we've been talking all about safety, as you know, as part of our Summer of Safety. Um, everything related to horse and rider safety, from body protectors, hats and tech, through biosecurity, yard feed security and equine health. And this week we're talking about riding and road safety. Um, and so we thought we'd get Sophie Gifford and Petra Ingram back on because they launched the Summer of Safety with us um, with their launch of the Horses for Health relay. So we'd like to get them back on tonight to tell you all about how the relay's been going, what they've been clocking up doing and what their plans are for the last two months of the survey, of the, of the survey, of the um, relay. So Sophie, you're the lady who's responsible for it all starting. And Petra, you're the chief executive of um, the Horse World um, charity, um, who is one of the main charities that's one of the beneficiaries of all the fundraising that's going on. So um, firstly, how are you both? And um, how have you been enjoying your summer activities? Hi, Claire. Um, very well, thank you. Yes, um, I don't think I've ever been quite so busy in the summer before. So, <laughs> But no, I'm managing to squeeze in some riding as well as um, burning the candles at both ends, um, planning more routes and, uh, and activities. But uh, it's been good. Oh, excellent. Petra, how about you? Yeah, no, really good. And uh, Horse World have been busy. So we've been um, working with the young people at the schools. We've rescued more horses so far this year than we did last year. Um, and we're right in the middle of doing a special programme in the summer, working with the families of young people. So um, there's been no let up for the team. And it's just great to see horses enjoying people and people enjoying horses. I know it's brilliant. We've got to make it uh, to, uh, to take advantage as much as we can in the months that we have in summer, because it is really the time to enjoy. Um, so, Sophie, can, can you give us some numbers? I'm a stats lady. So can you give us some stats about the ride? So how many riders have, or and drivers have signed up? How many miles have they covered? And um, perhaps for the charities, how much money have you raised? Right. Yeah, I'm a stats lady as well. So I have all of that information to hand. Um, so, so far, we have 701 fully registered riders across the UK. As you say, they're made up of carriage drivers, long reiners, um, walking in hand. Uh, and between them to date, they've covered um, across 293 different relay legs or rides. They've come uh, done just coming up to 1900 miles across the UK um, and that's been over a total of 565 hours so um, it's quite eye-watering and those are just the activities that have been uploaded onto our interactive map so the numbers are likely to be um, quite a bit more. In terms of the fundraising um, where we're at at the moment we're just approaching the £11,000 mark uh, of monies that we've raised and um, we Loving seeing the uh, the uh, um, sponsorship going up all the time. Um, so obviously we just welcome as much sponsorship as possible to help us help charities such as Horse World and the other charities. And, you know, I'm sure your miles and riders are a lot higher because I registered early on and I still haven't posted my mile. <laughs> and <laughs> I keep forgetting to. And I know I've done, you know, over the summer, and, and the sort of the regular long ones, I will have done hundreds. So it, I think yeah. people really should, but you do forget to clock them up. So, um, and I've had lots of people say, oh, I'll sponsor you. So I need to send them that sponsorship link around so they can actually pledge their <laughs> job. That's it. So it what, 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 absolutely. <laughs> so, so what's everybody been up to? What sort of stories have you heard about people's rides? Oh, gosh, the types of things are, are, have been really broad. So, um, you know, we've had um, one lovely lady, Tima Wayne in Yorkshire, who had um, bought a horse um, a, a few years back, a pony for her children to ride and um, discovered that he was fine until they removed the lead rein and then all hell would break loose. So she didn't want to sell him on. So she walks him in hand and she covered with Chili, the amazing pony. Pony, covered 72 miles and raised over a hundred pounds just just as an individual so we were really grateful to her and that that kind of story has occurred 
pretty much right across the country. Then we had phenomenal riding in Scotland with um, rides going across east to west. Um, we had a link all the way down from the Scottish border through Cumbria into Manchester. Um, we had, um, vet, well, every single mounted police unit to date has taken part. Um, we had a fabulous six day ride across Wales. Um, continuous ride done by three ladies, Karen, Kathy, and Bridget, who I was lucky enough to go up and meet when they arrived uh, at the border. Um, lots of activities going on at various RDA centres. And then the Isle of Man um, really went to town and had the baton ferried over um, by the steam packet ferry. Um, Lancashire and Merseyside Mounted Police um, got the baton on the way back. And then the carriage drivers um, uh, for the disabled group did a lot of driving um, through through the island. Um, and I think there were four or five days of continuous horsey activities. I think the, the whole island turned um, yellow with their fluorescent jackets. So that was great to see all of that. It's a real celebration, isn't it, Petra? That's what you said at the start. It's a it's a real celebration of that relationship we have with our horses. What have you what what have you what's inspired you, Petra, in terms of what you've heard about people? Well, I think that you know it's been a really tough eighteen months for everyone, and for those of us that are lucky enough to have a horse in our lives, uh, we know how valuable they've been and how important that relationship is that you have with horses. So, as you say, Claire, that the whole purpose of this was to be able to celebrate horses um, and recognise the role that horses play in our mental health, um, obviously the riding and road safety. Uh, and we're also supporting a number of rescue charities as well. But I think the mental health bit is the bit that's really resonated with me the most. Um, and for those of you that have already looked at our website, you can see we've actually got a specific section about how um, horses have helped individuals' mental health. So we've collected a lot of stories um, as part of this event. Um, but also we've had lots of really good feedback on the Facebook group, um, photographs and, I mean, some stunning scenery, places where you could just sit and, and look and be peaceful mm -hmm. in this, you know, chaotic world we live in. Um, and there's there's a couple of stories that have really um, resonated with, with me. I mean, the challenges people face in their lives from time to time are, you know, can be really distressing. Um, and whether that's a breakdown of a relationship, um, a bereavement or um, an illness, um, you know, we've heard different stories about how horses can really have a a positive impact on helping you get through those challenges. And, um, you know, it's been absolutely, um, I mean, quite humbling, to be honest, Claire, that people have been willing to share mm -hmm. their stories with us. And, um, you know, it's been, you know, I mean, we all have tough times in our lives, but that, that role of, of the horse and, and how they can help you through and sometimes how, you know, spending time with your horse may be almost accidental. Um, so, you know, one one lady that's been talking to us, um, you know, came across her horse in a completely unexpected way. Um, and they built a really special relationship and her horse really helped her out of a, a difficult mm. um, time uh, where she was struggling with her mental health. And then, you know, just when you think everything's going to, working well you know they had a road accident and uh, the horse got injured and so she you know repaid her horse by being with it um, and supporting it over you know a long 12-month period to recover from the road accident and uh, you know it's a it's a story of of some sadness but some great hope and, and inspiration mm -hmm. and you know I think the longer you learn about, the longer you spend with horses, the longer you own horses, the longer you, you know, you, you have time with horses. Just like, a, you know, Horse World, we see the um, the benefits of horses working with young people that are struggling with education. Mm. And we hear stories about how horses are helping veterans or, um, you know, elderly people with dementia. And, and there's just some really 
wonderful situations. And I think Horses for Health and the Relay has been a way of bringing it really out into the open um, and allowing people to talk about their experiences. And um, as you said, to really celebrate the, uh, the, the, the joy that horses bring to us mm. in our lives. So, you know, if people haven't looked at the website, I'd really encourage them to do that, horsesforhealth.co.uk. And look at the mental health section and read some of the stories. And I'm sure, you know, we'll be publicising some of those stories as we come towards the end of uh, the relay over the next two months. And I'm, uh, you know, very happy to hear from anybody that wants to share their story with us. But it's, um, yeah, quite humbling to be able to provide the opportunity for people to tell us their story. And I think if you've got horses, you know that. But for those who maybe haven't had that direct contact, they they don't realise. they Because, yeah, I, I mean, we all say it almost not lightheartedly but you know our horses to a large extent play a big role in keeping us sane at times you know I know during lockdown last year I'd come home from work and I just wanted to get on my horse and ride because you can switch off and it's just you and the horse outdoors and you it's, it is it is very peaceful and very calming and I think that we take that a bit for granted but we really shouldn't we should really be grateful for for having that as an option. It's very, it's very interesting that there's a, there's a, you know, a lot of focus at the moment on mindfulness mm. and how, you know, we should all take a moment in the day um, to, to spend in a mindful way. And I think riding a horse or being with a horse where you've got to concentrate on just being in the moment mm. with that horse um, is an incredible mindful experience. Mm. Um, and I know, say, Sophie, you mentioned at the start, you spend, you know, quite a lot of time with your horse, Mr. Jack. And uh, I know he's he kind of has probably helped you and motivated you through all of the organisation that's had to go on with the relay. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. You know, I, I um, he he saves me um, every day on a on a mental sanity basis. But um, but what I found really interesting, Claire, is that it's it's the impact that the horses have, not just on people that that own them. Um, you know, the example I would give is. Um, the RDA, one of our other charities, have started a program called Tea with a Pony. Yes. And and um, I was lucky enough to be at the Cavalier Centre, the RDA Centre up in Shropshire a few weeks back when they held an event. Um, and that was inspiring in itself. And the people up there just put on a fabulous event. But I was talking to the centre manager, Rachel, there, and she was saying that they had hosted, um, they'd already done one tea for um with a pony and they it it's about bringing people from nursing homes or old people's homes and she said it's really noticeable they arrive and they're just talking amongst themselves about their normal you know routine and then the ponies are brought in and they're brought over to be introduced and she said everything changes these people just all of a sudden they're beaming, they're asking a thousand questions. When can we come back? And and it really just hit me that actually, you know, horses, any animal, but you know, for us horses are that bridge between loneliness and, and engagement and inclusivity. And it's just lovely to hear about it. Mm, that's really sounds special. I'd seen about that, but I haven't seen one in action. And and it is it's so special because they're unquestioning, they listen, they don't judge, and they they help to unite people. Absolutely, yeah. And that's actually what we've been doing with our with our families' work is trying to bring families together. Mm -hmm. um, so whether that's a parent and a child, siblings, maybe two parents, um, and actually using the horses to improve the cohesiveness within the family um, and some of the you know pre and post evaluation has really shown that just spending a couple of hours together as a family with a horse um, has already given them something in common um, mm. if, it, if it's you know it's the kind of overcoming maybe sometimes the fear of these mm. big animals you know um, but actually doing things together and grooming together and uh, and what have you so I think you're, you're absolutely right that cohesiveness that comes with, mm. with being with, with a horse uh, and that kind of subconscious communication, I'm sure we've all stood there next to our horses and just um, been there listening to them breathing, 
listening to them eating. I love that when you just hear them mm. munching the hay. Yeah. It's kind of really special. I <laughs> only hear slurping with Mr Jack. He doesn't seem to be able to <laughs> munch anything. He just inhales. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. So we're, we're over halfway through. Um, what still to come Sophie and if you look at you say say the east of England and the southeast yes. what have you got to look forward I'm, I'm very envious because I don't think I can make it to it but because um, you told me about it so tell us all um, so we're, we're just in the East Midlands at the moment. So there was a lovely ride this morning on, along the Teversal Trails. We've just put up some lovely photos from that. Um, but this weekend, um, we move down into the East of England and that's kicked off um, with um, the Batten leaving the East Midlands on Saturday um, at an event at Bransby Horses over in Lincoln where they've got Georgia Kovalek, who's a, a social media sensation on the Little Pet channel. Um, so she's going to be there in person. I know it's I, I'm showing my age now, but I've been yeah. genning up. I've been genning up on it. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so that's going to be a, a, a great event with a wellness walk. Um, and then on Sunday, we have um, a small ride over in uh, Cambridge. So these are fun rides, park and rides where um, really We've been really grateful to establishments that have offered us parking so that people can go and ride in areas that they potentially wouldn't normally have access to. Then we've got some really exciting things coming up as we uh, as we move down through and into Essex. So we have an event planned um, in early September at Red Wing Centre at Caldercott. Good. Yeah, using their memory garden. That's really going to be quite special. Um, uh, we have more than 100 miles of continuous baton riding going on um, down from Kent, Cookie Trail into East Sussex, and then the full length of the South Downs Way going over to Hampshire. The Isle of Wight have, are trying to, um, to trump the Isle of Man. So they've actually got rides going around the whole, um, the whole circumference of the island wow. um, throughout the full two weeks. And then what I'm really excited about is amongst all the other rides we have where Prosecco is, um, is appearing quite frequently, um, we've been really grateful to the Wimbledon and Putney Common Park Rangers who have invited um, a small number of us to go and ride with them. Um, so that's going to be on the 31st of August. Um, I walked the route last week. Um, decided I'm moving to Wimbledon because it's so lovely. That's uh, the one I'm envious about because you told me about this one. I know. No. no. Well, it's so, you know, I know it's quite a drive for you, but you should try and come down. It'd be lovely. Um, so, yes, and, and we're hoping to, uh, again, we're hoping to have some London mounted police units um, there. Um, and we sort of weaving through all of this are the, the collaborations that we've had with organisations such as BETA, I mean, you've been so supportive of us, but also BHS, Alan at the BHS, mm. who's been with Dares Pain, has been incredibly supportive. Um, and we're, you know, we're really helping to, um, to support their key messages about road safety, um, using the materials that BETA have kindly um, allowed us to use for your, your TAC and rider safety. Um, and then, you know, all of our, our other corporate sponsors, Nailers, SEIB, Equine Exceed, Equidiet, you know, we've, we've had overwhelming support. Um, and that means that we can keep providing all of our registered riders with more and more freebies. And uh, again, Beta have been fabulous in supporting us with that. I know it's our pleasure. It's, it just fits so well, I think, for, for everyone who owns or, or has a horse or rides. It's really the awareness raising that it brings, as well as the good it does in terms of charities. Um, Petra, and your 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 charity is based down in the southwest, being just outside Bristol. What have you got coming up? So, being in the southwest, we're the last um, region of the relay. So we've been sort of sitting quietly at the moment, learning from all the other 10 regions to see what we can do. So, you know, all the things that Sophie mentioned, you can find those on the regions page of our website. If you have a look at Southwest, it's a little bit quiet at the moment, um, but we've just started our planning. Um, we've been in discussions with the Avon and Somerset Mounted Police. So they've got a couple of um, uh, rides that they're going to participate in in quite stunning locations so you can look out for those 
Obviously, as you said, Claire, Horse World is based just south of Bristol. So, you know, we're hoping to receive the baton. Um, I think it's the 19th of September and do something very special. So anyone that's in um, that area, keep a, a, an eye out for, for what we're doing. We're just kind of planning that at the moment. Um, and then I'm actually based myself down near um, Quantox and Exmoor. So we've been starting discussions about doing some park and rides. Um, amazing part of the country. Um, and that's worked really well, I think, in a number of the regions where we've given um, people the opportunity to go and ride in a place that they wouldn't normally go to. So either escorted ride or um, self um, self self fun. What do you call guided. it, Sophie? Self guided. Self -guided. <laughs> so providing some maps and things for people. So I guess a little bit of a shout out for anyone that may be watching today that lives in the southwest um, is willing to open up a car park or a field for a few people to come and uh, and park in. Our dates are nineteenth of September through to the second of October. Um, if you if you've got some facilities and you're willing to open them up to horses for health registered riders to help raise money for our seven charities then drop an email to info at horsesforhealth.co.uk and uh, we'll be in touch with you because we'd like in the southwest to get as many park and rides yeah. as we can and that you know covers regions like um, Gloucestershire, Wiltshire, um, Dorset, Somerset, Devon and finally in Cornwall. I think I've remembered them all, Sophie. Okay. So yes, we've got yeah. quite a big region to cover, yeah. quite a lot to do in two weeks. Um, I'm not sure we're going to get a 100-mile relay ride set up, but we've got lots of um, other ideas. But we'd like to have the most number of park and rides that any of the regions have done um, because that seems to have been the most successful option. And, and give you know our riders, our carriage drivers, even if there's people out there that just like to long rein or walk in hand, or even just pedestrians and cyclists, the opportunity to go somewhere that they wouldn't normally go and ride. And you've got such stunning parts of the country down there. I lived in Somerset for a few years and we did quite a few long rides. We went away for some weekends and took the horses with us. And it is stunning. And I do think that you've really, with this park and ride, it's a brilliant idea because it's something that really gives people the opportunity to see something new or, as you say, Petra, some ride somewhere that they wouldn't ordinarily be able to, to ride at. And, and Petra, you mentioned the registration. Sophie, we need to get more people actually registered because you've got an enormous Facebook group to over 10,000 people. Well, but we're nearly at 11,000 now. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you need to come on people, register. Yeah, and uh, it's a really good point because um, we do need people to register because um, putting on things like this doesn't come free. There's, you know, there's lots of materials and things that Horse World have, have been really generous with, but, you know, we haven't got we haven't got endlessly deep pockets. And the other thing is as well is that um, it's so much easier to be able to organise things when you know um, that you've got a core base of registered riders. Um, so, you know, it, sometimes it can be chicken and egg. That's probably been the hardest thing for us is to generate those registrations. Um, they they do come through and, you know, we the money is, is for a great cause, is for, you know, people helping horses, helping people. So, yeah, the, the registration fee is £15 for a rider down to £8 for a pedestrian. Um, and, you know, you get some fabulous uh, things come through in your goodie pack as well. Ooh, I was delighted. We've been, I we've, been, we've been really quick as well, because obviously uh, at Horse World, we're fulfilling all the registrations. So the team are on standby to send them out within a matter of days. Um, and as Sophie said, you'll get your high vis with your logos on. So you'll be able to ride out and tell people that you're raising money for our seven amazing charities. Um, you'll get your rosette. You've got your SOS label and a whole range of vouchers as well when you register and then you'll get vouchers when you complete your your ride so um it's actually really good value um, and, and forget, you know it's so and, and don't forget that if you are registered people who are registered for the ride can then if they go in and shop with a beta member spend a minimum of £30, then they can enter our prize draw to win over a £1,000 worth of goodies um, provided by beta members, which is tremendously generous of them. There's feed, 
there's um, really lovely head collar. There's a smashing rug because it's been sitting in my office since we launched this. And I keep looking at it and thinking that would look really good on one of my horses. Um, there's feed vouchers. There's um, hat vouchers and a fantastically generous 250 pound voucher from Shire's Equestrian as well. So this is, you know, your opportunity. And we've got GS Equestrian. There's an uh, uh, annual subscription to Horse and Rider magazine. So some really fabulous prizes there and all people have to do is once they've shopped with a beta member take a picture of that of their till receipt um with the proof that they're registered so most people are using their high vis vest um and then email it back to us to um this email address info at beta-uk.org just take a picture on your phone send it to us um and then we'll enter you into that drawer and, and Claire, it's it's just worth, you know, anybody that wants to find out more details um, about that and also the brilliant calendar competition that that, um, that you've got going. Though I know those and all of the events are available um, on the events section of the Great Horses for Health UK Relay Facebook page. Um, so if you go on there and click on the events, you'll find them all in there with all of the details. And um, you can't miss the bright green uh, event for the uh, the 1,000 pound gift hamper from um, from your your lovely retailers. I'm just envious because it wouldn't be appropriate for me to apply. No, so no, it's not fair, is it? <laughs> it really isn't fair. So, so we're, we're winding up for the finale. Have you got something special? Because I think Petra said it ends on the 2nd of October, don't you? Have you got something planned for that, that last finale? Well, I think that one thing that has been in our mind as we've gone through this, Claire, is that we have heard from people that are not able to take part. Maybe their horse has been lame or, you know, sadly uh, they've lost their horse or they had a horse previously, but they don't have one now. So we wanted to try and find a way of enabling um, uh, those people to be part of what we're doing. So we've always, right from the beginning, we've wanted to make it as flexible, as inclusive. You know, everyone should be able to celebrate the, the, the amazing creatures that horses are. So we're in kind of, I would say, preliminary discussions. Maybe it moved on a bit last night. We had our, one of our regional volunteers uh, committee meetings last night um, about doing something in October to enable everybody to come together. We've been around the whole of the, of the UK. Um, we want to uh, create an opportunity for everyone to kind of put their hands in the air and say, yes, I love my horse or I loved my horse or, you know, not able to take part, but that this is something, doing something to, uh, to recognise my horse. And uh, a kind of final fanfare for um, our uh, love of our horses and our ability to celebrate them, wherever they've been in our lives, wherever they are now, um, whether that's remembering them or just celebrating, you know, those that we still have the joy of, uh, of spending time with. So it's probably going to be something online rather than a physical event, because that's going to be a way of, of bringing everybody mm -hmm. together. Um, and uh, we hope to kind of keep some of our celebrities involved. So we've had some quite high profile people involved along the way. So it's an opportunity for us to to engage with them and maybe even create a kind of a memento of uh, of the of the the whole relay that people can 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 keep and, and be part of and just a way of you know uniting mm -hmm. um, all of us and our love of, of our horses so I think it's probably as much as I can say right now but I you know we're we're in the next kind of couple of weeks I think you'll hear more about this but we don't want to undermine obviously those regions that haven't taken part yet and we mm -hmm. still want to get out and get people registered um, and, uh, and and get those activities continuing while we make the most of the, the end of the summer um, and, uh, you know, through to the 2nd of October. But I guess it's about watch this space, would you say, Sophie? I, I would. I would definitely say watch this space, especially after last night's conversation, because there were some great ideas that came out. And um, and also watch this space because on the third of October, my my wonderful all suffering husband has um, acquired a full size horse outfit with a full size 
horse head to go on and he and a couple of his colleagues are going to do a five kilometer run on behalf of horses for health brilliant uh, uh, and um he said if they can generate 500 pounds sponsorship or more he will donate 500 pounds himself so <laughs> very admirable of him sophie after he's had to put up with all of you your time spent on this all summer it's brilliant yeah, so uh, I wanted to put it out there so that it's always it's it's on film and recorded. I can say, <laughs> see, you tend to do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's very unfair. I'll so, change his mind now. Yeah, I know. no, and and the point is just on the registration thing is even if the relay's been through your region, you can yeah. still clock miles up for your region and Absolutely. still register. The the opportunity yeah. is still there. Absolutely. I mean, we've we've got rides um going on the map. Um, frequently, um, you know, from from the first earliest regions, Scotland, North East, Yorkshire, um, you know, I've I've put rides up that I've done, even though the South East doesn't start for um, for another three or four weeks. But um, yeah, there's absolutely no barrier to that. And you know, and as Petra said, you know, why not register, get the goodies, especially the high vis, which is you know is lovely, um, really? and you know. It's in, as you say, it's in line with Summer of Safety. It's in line with the Horse Eye app. You know, you spoke to Alan earlier this week and, um, you know, he, he was very um, vocal, wasn't he, about the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, it buys you that extra few seconds of visibility. And it, then you've got all the discount vouchers as well. So, it, you know, what, what's not to love? No, exactly. And we've got... Um uh police officer zoe tomorrow uh, on friday yeah. talking to us about road safety and i know she's very um promoting of of high vis and then i'm hoping to speak to somebody from the air ambulance next week and and they are particularly keen on high vis because basically if you have an accident an air ambulance comes out to try and find you that's what they'll be looking for so it's really really key so i think it's brilliant that you've you've made those available um and and it gives people the incentive to use them all year round, not just when, you know, when you may think it's it's darker or duller. They're absolutely key in summer as well. It's like a puppy. It's not just for Christmas. It's for all year. <laughs> it is, exactly. So, ladies, thank you so much for joining us um, this evening. It's lovely to see you both again. And maybe we can catch up at the end when you've had a bit of a recovery time. Um, and don't forget, people, register go out and and fundraise and perhaps most of all really enjoy those horses thank you both very much thank you claire and thank you for everything you've done for us our, our pleasure thank you see you again Really soon. appreciate it thank Thanks, you bye-bye bye-bye